And welcome everyone to another edition of Get to Know. I'm Scott Levin in the Channel 2 studios. I am joined by a very special guest today, Renee Jones, Chairman and CEO of locally owned and corporate headquarters here, M&T Bank, my personal bank, I'm happy to say as well. Very happy with M&T as well. Now, Renee, welcome to Get to Know. Glad to have you here today. Thanks, Scott. Happy to be here. And first and foremost, I want to congratulate you on being named in the top 10, I believe, number two of uh, Business First, Power 250. What an amazing recognition. What was your reaction when you heard that? <laughs> I, look, I think it's just great to be, uh, to be recognized for the work that my whole company does and, 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 and to be part of the community. So it was great to, 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 that, that people believe the work that we're doing is really relevant. You guys do a great job. All right, let's talk a little bit about you. The people who watch us, they want to get to know you a little bit, and then we'll talk about M&T. Where were you born and raised, Renee? Well, Scott, I was born in uh, a, a little town called Ayer, Massachusetts, which is about 36 miles outside of uh, uh, Boston, uh, Massachusetts. And uh, it's right next to a military base called Fort Devens, which is the last place that my dad, uh, who was a sergeant first class in the Army, was stationed. Now, I know that uh, you were raised there and you went to school there. And then what happened? Tell me about the transition into college for you. Where did you go to school? Well, I, I went to Boston College. And I think maybe what's relevant about that is I hadn't intended to go to, to BC. I, I thought I might uh, either go into the military uh, or, 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 or maybe go into uh, you know, some form of college. But my sister encouraged me that I should apply to Boston College. Uh, and for some reason, I got in. And uh, <laughs> it's a good school. Uh, it, it was, it's a great school, tremendous school. And uh, one of the best things that happened for me is that I got put into a program uh, that would help um, African American, Asian, Hispanic, uh, Native American uh, students actually uh, uh, have su have a support system. How to how to how to study, how to how to interview. Uh, and then from there, I, I worked at the Gillette Company because someone picked me out. Uh, I, I went to graduate school because someone thought it was a good idea for me. <laughs> so, you know, uh, I, I've sort of time and time again been lifted up uh, to the point where uh, someone from M&T Bank sent me a letter uh, in my final year of grad school and said, hey, you might, you might want to come out to Western New York because we're looking for talent uh, that has experience. Uh, we're not looking for a training center, and we thought that you would be a great person to interview. So I came. And uh, it was a, it's been a wonderful experience ever since. And, and correct me if I'm wrong, you went to graduate school, I believe, in Rochester at the Simon Business School, correct? That's right. That's right. And what were you studying? Were you studying to become a CPA and eventually became a CPA? No, when I, 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 I was an accounting uh, major at Boston College, uh, and I worked uh, out of college at, at Ernst. And so I had obtained my CPA. Then I went back to graduate school. And I wanted to learn more about uh, the economies, uh, so I, I got I got degrees in uh, organizations and markets uh, and finance. All right. So uh, back then, did you ever think that uh, was it possible that you might become a banker? Back then, is that what you wanted no. to become? No. I never thought I would become a banker. Um, uh, in fact, I thought what I really wanted to do is to become an economist. <laughs> Yeah. And I didn't know how to become an economist, so uh, I talked to one of my professors at the University of Rochester, and I said, how do you do that? <laughs> and she said, well, generally what happens is you study economics, and if you're lucky, you're left in the TA room when the Wall Street Journal calls over the weekend. You pick it up, you answer the question, and they print <laughs> your name in the paper as economist, and then you're an economist. <laughs> that, is, that is so true. <laughs> that is very funny, too. Okay. All right, so you got the call to come to M&T in Buffalo. What were your thoughts when you arrived here in Buffalo? I believe it was 1992. And what did you start doing when you went to M&T? Because you have an incredible management training program for a lot of young men and women. Uh, is that what you went through then? What was your first job with M&T? My first job, I came in through what was known, still known as the Executive Associate Program. So they, uh, we would bring in, at the time, I think we brought in 17 that year, uh, MBAs. Uh, I, I have to say, Scott, the first impression I got of Buffalo was I could not believe how friendly the people were. Mm -hmm. um, I came my first day. Uh, I, I, had, I had got an apartment. I was and I walked down Main Street, and, and the outreach from people just was the first thing that was amazing. Um, early on in my first three days, uh, a gentleman sat down uh, to have lunch with me and asked if the seat was taken, and it turned out it was Mr. Wilmers. <laughs> and so. 
you know, the friendly open nature of the place was the first thing I noted. Uh, then we had tremendous opportunity uh, to engage uh, in, in, in the business of banking and to, and to solve problems. Uh, Bob Wilmers had this huge belief in talent and it wasn't just a, a attracting strong talent, but it was giving them opportunities mm -hmm. to solve problems. Uh, and so one way, shape or another, over 28 years, my job every year has been solving some sort of problem. Because it really is, when you think about it, the definition of business is solving problems and helping your own customers succeed. Exactly. Exactly. Right. So, so you get here in 1992, you're a single man. When did, when did you meet your wife and how did that all happen? So yeah, I was single when I came. Uh, I, I met my wife, Bridget Doherty, uh, and she, she did a, a short stint, a couple of weeks of internship uh, when she was home from college. We met and we dated uh, uh, for four years uh, and we, we got married. We covered a lot of distance. She was in Boston and then she was in New York City. So uh, we, we did distance for uh, seven of the eight years of our first eight years. Uh, what ended that was, of course, the, the birth of our daughter, Haley, and then we were lucky enough to have Sophie come along two years later, and that's, that's the Jones family. There you go. And uh, all right, just so the people know, are you a North Town, South Towns guy? Where are you living? Are you... I live in Eggertsville. Uh, there you go. As, I, as I like to say, one foot out of the city proper. Uh, and uh, it's, it's great because you're connected to everything. You can get to everywhere. It's a great neighborhood, but you're, you're, you're also right there and have all the advantages of the city, which, are, which is phenomenal. Now, I, you have said, I've done some research, obviously, and Renee, you say we think of ourselves at M&T not as a community bank, but as a bank for communities. What do you mean by that? Yeah, you know, in, in a traditional sense, uh, in, in the way we all grew up, is there were community banks. And, you know, that... Uh, has become very common in large institutions to talk about the fact that they're community banks. Uh, but as we've gotten larger and we've gone into more communities, we had to really think about what do we stand for? Why do we exist as an institution? And so we came up with this idea that we're an institution that exists for communities. That's our purpose. Mm -hmm. uh, and, our, and, and embedded in that is our job is, is to improve the quality of, of, of the lives of those individuals that we touch in those communities. So Bank for Community is sort of uh, our purpose, where we're headed, and it's, we think it, it, it evokes that, that understanding for people and what they should expect of us. Now, you also had a message to some shareholders uh, that it has never been more evident that our role to bring all communities and constituents along together must be bigger, deeper, and more purposeful, especially during this pandemic, right, Renee? Yeah, yeah. I, you know, a bank, particularly a bank, but I'd probably say any corporation is only as healthy as its constituents. And when you think about where we are in Buffalo, there's a long way to go, whether it be an education system or uh, if we're talking about uh, inclusivity and getting more individuals who are out of jobs into opportunities. Uh, Buffalo is a really, uh, has a really bright future. That future is really centered around attracting, retaining, and developing and engaging the collective, uh, the collective group of our of our talent, and if we're if we're more inclusive, it's going to actually give us increase the health of our of our community, which in turn helps any corporation that's within it. And you guys have done such amazing community work here in Western New York, and you have thousands of employees. What advice would you give to someone who's watching this and says, you know, I really love what M and T stands for. I'd like to work for them one day. What do you recommend if they're young and they're coming up through education? A lot of people say you don't necessarily need proper, quote, college schooling these days because of the debt it's going to give you. What's the best recommendation for some young people that may be moving up in their career if they do want to work for m and I think, if, if, you know, if I, if I could take myself back uh, uh, several decades, you know, I, I would, what I would say is to, to give, give towns like Buffalo that are really re-emerging as, as, as really uh, places for modern creative talent and give Buffalo a chance. Uh, it used to be, I think, for, for a number of decades where you sort of had to leave Buffalo, uh, go to the coastal cities and, and try to develop your skill sets and your talents. But we're creating a place here in Buffalo and particularly as we begin to launch the tech hub uh, where, where you don't necessarily need to leave to get those modern talents and those modern skill sets uh, that are out there. There's huge opportunity, large demand for uh, for 
for uh, skilled workers. And what we're trying to do is embrace that. And I think if those individuals who realize that are going to have a huge advantage. Cost of living is awesome here, and we're increasingly growing our creative class talent. So uh, I'd say lean in, talk to talk to folks in, in, in the community. Uh, as my wife often say, says, go on the coffee route. Uh, introduce yourselves to folks and, and don't be bashful because I think there's a lot of opportunity. We're looking for uh, lots of, uh, of, of young talent uh, to help us grow the city in the bank. And I do have some questions I want to ask you about that tech hub. But first, one last question about yourself. I know you don't like talking about yourself that much, and I understand that. But you did mention uh, your African-American heritage. Um, you are the son of an African-American soldier and the Belgium wife that he met. An incredible story during World War II. One of now three only CEOs on the uh, Fortune 500, which is incredible. Uh, how important is corporate diversity to you and to m and now? Uh, corporate, uh, corporate diversity is, is one of the, the pillars of our success. I mean, to the extent that we can be more inclusive and we can attract world-class talent, uh, that, 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 that's going to be at a huge advantage for us. If you think about what we you know, we're going to talk about the tech hub, but if you think about in the tech space today, mo and, and tech, the, the technology ecosystem, there's six, 7% of, of technologists are African-American. Only 8% are, 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 are Latinx. Wow. Uh, I think about 26% are women. So when you think of the opportunity uh, to find more talent that can actually give us uh, an advantage in this race for relevance that's happening across America, to the extent that we can find ways to unlock that talent that has not been given the opportunity before, it's going to give Buffalo a huge advantage. So that's one of our principal places to focus uh, we think inclusion uh, is is uh, is, a, is a key to our long-term success. Absolutely. Great answer there. All right, let's talk about the tech hub that everyone is talking about now. Uh, you've renovated that great building downtown. $37 million. How's it coming along, Renee? Uh, it's great. We're, we're just about ready to launch. You know, we were delayed a little bit because of COVID, but I think that gave us a chance to sort of think about, uh, you know, how we're going to continue to work, how we're going to work in the future. Uh, and, and when you come into the tech center, which I hope all of you will do, you really get the sense of uh, this idea that, no, you're probably not going to be working from home 100 percent of your time because the space is tremendous. The ability for collaboration to have resources to help you do your job uh, and, and to work on innovative things is going to be tremendous. So we're really excited about it. This can really transform the community, you say, right? I believe so. I mean, I think if you think of the way uh, things used to work um, in the past, like regions manufactured their prosperity by by trying to get uh, uh, a few large companies to move into your area, maybe by giving tax incentives. And the other thing that would happen is that there would be a small number of individuals who were who were marshalling that effort to go. What's happening today in really prosperous regions and, and, and what we believe to be prosperous regions in the future is those ecosystems are gonna be built that attract, retain and develop uh, and engage talent, right? And allowing those individuals to start up companies. And so when you look at the tech hub today, I think we're up to seven, eight, nine tenants. All of those companies are uh, some in some way, shape or form tech oriented but most importantly, they're all run by entrepreneurs mm -hmm. who are growing, trying to create opportunity for new jobs and, 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 and prosperity. So, uh, you know, we're really excited about the, the, the ecosystem that's being created. It's not a tech, it's not an M&T tech hub. It's really a community tech hub. And this will definitely help you in your efforts to recruit top talent from not just Western New York, but from all around the country, correct? Exactly. I think it's a it's a big effort. It started with us and, and the fact that we realized that, that we were going to need more modern skill sets in order to be able to compete in banking. But then what we realized was that um, for, for the bank to do it on its own, it wouldn't really work. Creative class talent really likes to solve problems. They do not care whether they're solving problems for a bank or in healthcare or in, uh, um, uh, uh, you know, a consumer goods company. They just want to solve problems. They want to come to two places that engage them where they can engage in like-minded people who are also trying to solve problems. So what we realized is we really had to help the whole ecosystem, not just M&T. Mm -hmm. But that's the idea, Scott. The idea is how do we bring more people and retain more people in Buffalo?
All right, and I got one more business question for you. With all the flood of uh, money that is going out um, and our debt increasing, do you think that we're going to see a huge uh, increase in prices? There'll be inflation, or what do you think about the future of the economy? What do you think is going to happen? It's a great question that, that everybody's sort of talking about. I think you have to start off with the fact that most, almost my entire 28-year uh, career at M&T, um, that that there has been this worry about inflation. And we've gone through this period, which I believe uh, the reason that we haven't seen inflation is because there's been so much productivity gains. People are able to do so much more. If you think of just the COVID and the fact that we were able to serve all of our customers from home, uh, our level of productivity has gone through the roof. Uh, I am concerned about the level of cash in the economy. It's unprecedented. And I think that we're going to have to watch it very closely. But to the extent that we can continue to increase productivity and get productivity gains, that'll be a force that sort of works against that. So we're watching it. Uh, we'll all see what happens. But these are these are really interesting times. You know, it's incredible that we have a, a, a company like M&T headquartered here. You're a very busy CEO. I get that. And I appreciate your time today. A couple more questions. What do you like to do on the weekends when you're not working? <laughs> well, uh, I, I like to go for walks. I like to do uh, random lunches uh, at the last minute to get together with folks. Uh, most, my primary job is to sit around the house and wait for one of my daughters <laughs> who are 18 and 16 to ask me to take them somewhere. Most of the time, I'm left sitting on the couch, but on occasion, I get to actually escort them somewhere. So it's that's called my being an job. Uber driver for our kids is what it is. Exactly. I exactly. know the feeling quite well. All right. Are you, and you're a big sports fan, are you? Bills, Sabres, uh, Bisons? What do, you, what do you like to do? I mean, I, I'm, a, I'm a big sports fan. I, I, I love watching the Bills. Uh, I, 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 uh, I, I don't watch a lot of hockey. Basketball is probably more my speed. Right. Gotcha. Last question. What is it that you love most? about Buffalo? There is not a friendlier, uh, more respectful uh, place in the country. Uh, we, we, uh, we're kind. We often say when we go to different places and different states where we do businesses, we often say to people that we're going to introduce ourselves, that are going to, when we're going to introduce ourselves to people, remember, we're from Buffalo. Mm. Uh, and it, it, it speaks volumes for, for uh, the ethics and, and, and how, we, how we like how the community treats people. So that's our, that's our favorite thing. Well, as a community, we are lucky to have you, Renee, in town here. And uh, as a person who has been with M&T since 1998, I am grateful also. You guys have a great bank, great service, great people in your branches. And uh, I'm thankful for your time today and coming on our show, Renee. Thanks, Scott. I appreciate it. Renee Jones, the chairman and CEO of M&T Bank in Buffalo. Renee, thanks. Thank you.